What's up, everybody? Welcome into this web edition of No Pulp alongside Corey Spector. I'm AJ Fabry. We're going to be breaking down the biggest stories in the college athletics universe. So without further ado, Corey, let's get right into things. We're talking college hoops, specifically in the Big 12. The last time Kansas didn't win the Big 12, yeah, by Usher featuring oh, yeah. Ludacris and Lil Jon was the number one song on the charts in my book. That song is still a banger, but Kansas is in serious jeopardy of dropping their first Big 12 title in nearly 14 years. Corey, how's the Big 12 going to play out? Well, AJ, Kansas just got absolutely throttled Thumped. by Texas Tech on Saturday night, and now Kansas is in a big rut. They have to basically win out the entire way, win their last four games, and they need K-State to lose one game either to Baylor or to Oklahoma or to TCU. None of those games are a given for either side. I don't see how Kansas repeats as at least a tie to uh, win the Big 12. Yeah, and that sets up a huge matchup. Kansas State going into Lawrence to take on Kansas. And look, listen, the Wildcats currently, Ken Palm is projecting them to win the Big 12, but K-State hasn't beaten K KU in Allen Fieldhouse since, in, since 2006. They, it's just they How old were you then? They can't get the monkey. I don't know. I don't even know how old I am right now. Don't worry about that. But Kansas looking to bounce back from that 30-point blowout, but they need a lot of help. And this is a situation that Kansas just hasn't been in, but I still like them to win at home, especially bouncing back from you that 30-point loss. I, I don't know if they're going to win the Big 12. I like them to bounce back and beat K-State, though. Give me Texas Tech. Jared Culver, the only player in the Big 12 in the top five in points and assists. I think they went out. They just absolutely canned Kansas. I think they win. Mm -hmm. All right, another conference that we should go to. There's another big time neck and neck photo finish up coming in the SCC. Tennessee, Kentucky, and LSU sit atop the standings all at 12 and 2 in conference play. The Tigers just defeated the Volunteers on Saturday in overtime to snag a share of first place in the SCC. AJ, what do you got coming down the stretch here? These are three great teams. Honestly, the SEC, obviously known for its football, but they might have one of the most top-heavy conferences yeah. and a lot of talent, but I think I got to go with the Wildcats, yep. Kentucky. I mean, you look at their talent on that roster. Okay, they always got the big recruits, but if you look at the sidelines, I think I like Coach Calipari. Yeah, do you like Rick Barnes, really? Nah, see, he's had that, you know, that no. voodoo curse. He just never wins the big game in the tournament. LSU, they just haven't been there enough, so... I think I like Kentucky down the stretch here. Listen, they own the SEC. Big Blue travels. You know they're going to be yep. loud wherever they play. I like Kentucky down the home stretch, but those three teams, I think those are three elite eight teams, honestly. That game down at uh, LSU that they pulled out, that was a big win for the Tigers. Three talented teams. ACC, Big Ten, and the SEC, the three biggest conferences so far yeah. in college basketball. LSU, you mentioned that you don't believe in them down the stretch. I just don't see how they've had any convincing victories. Yes, they beat Kentucky and Tennessee. Girls are great victories. The problem, you lost to Arkansas. You only beat the second to last place team in the SEC, Georgia, by four points. I just don't believe in LSU. Kentucky's the team. Yeah, well, we'll see down the stretch. You never know. Lots of talent there. But I hope everybody brought their spoons because now we're going to be talking some college laps. Right, I forgot it. Tons of parity in the top 25 this year with massive upsets all over the board. Unranked Villanova knocked off number one Yale to start the season. And upstart High Point has taken down lacrosse Blue Bloods in, Blue Bloods in number two Duke and number nine Virginia. Corey, what do you make of all this? All right, so you mentioned Yale and should be worried? No. They just beat Penn State, the number two team in the country. And you have TD Erlin, the best faceoff guy in the entire country, the transfer from Albany, who won 75% of his faceoffs last year. And then against Penn State, he dominated Gerard Arceri. That guy came into the day winning 80% of his faceoffs. And by the way, TD Erlin against him, 25 of 31. Yale is just going to have so many possessions that I think the Bulldogs are clearly the number one team in the country. Listen, you're throwing a lot of names, a lot of numbers, and I just look at this from a context point of view, right? Only five undefeated teams in the top 25. And we're in the third week of the season right now. I mean, this is great for lacrosse. Parody's Lots great. of yep. parity. I mean, you got teams in there. High point, like we mentioned. Penn State now the number two team in the country. You would never think those teams were going to be in there. We saw Colgate beat Syracuse earlier this season. I think it's great for the sport where small schools can jump up and beat these big teams and compete down the stretch. Absolutely. And 
We'll go back to college basketball for a moment. There was what some would call a huge in-state rivalry last Wednesday. Yeah, North Carolina and Duke at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And ticket prices skyrocketed. Just to get into the building, cost you almost three grand. AJ, you multiply that by 9,300, and that's a lot of cash. Yeah, I mean, average ticket price, 4,670. The cheapest ticket price, $3,000. That's insane for a college basketball game. Lots of money to be made. Who gets it? Not the players, Ooh. though. Zion Williamson, uh, all he got was a knee injury uh, 33 seconds mm. into the game. I mean, Okay, I, I, that's this is my. I'm gonna die on this hill. The NCAA being, we can't even go there. You're gonna bit, go on a rant. A we little can't bit either. shady, but come on, man. There's so much money. Those ticket prices. The Super Bowl. That's the biggest sporting event in the world. And UNC Duke. These guys. What are they eating? Ramen noodles for dinner? Like they're hey, on that diet. They're good. Like they're healthy. I, come on, Cheetos. Then they're not seeing any cut of this. It's tough to see, but those are crazy numbers. And that's the Zion effect. That's what he's done all year. Mm -hmm. This year for college right. basketball. So I, I computed my own math. I set the ticket prices at 2900 right? So if you take the 33 seconds that Zion Williamson played, $88 per second of action. That's a lot of cash. That's good math. A lot. Yeah, you want to hear some other good math? You ready uh, for this? Really. So you take $2,900, <laughs> right? I know you don't want to hear it, but I'd still like to provide it. Okay. Because I want to educate you. You could buy 17 official NBA Spalding balls with that kind of cash. You could also buy 16 average price seats to watch Syracuse and Duke from this past weekend. Really? Yeah. And you could buy 20 no's, 29 of those PG 2.5s that Zion Williamson broke his shoe in. What are you, an econ major yeah. or something? 29 of those. That's that's a lot. Which is actually 58, 29 pairs. But that's yeah. why they pay the big bucks. Yeah. Anyway, there's no secret who the favorite for the number one overall pick in the NBA draft is. That's Zion Williamson coming in at minus 2,000 to be taken first this spring. Corey, that's $20 to make one buck. What do you think? Are you taking that back? Um, I would definitely say Zion Williamson is probably going to be the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. Probably. But here's my thing. I think the Knicks are going to have the number one overall pick, right? And then you have to make a decision. Are you going to take Zion Williamson when you already have Kevin Knox and Mitchell Robinson in the front court? Or do you take R.J. Barrett, who maybe slots in more as a two-guard, and we saw how crafty he was against yeah. Syracuse on Saturday. That man is good. I like Zion Williamson better. I'm just saying to win one buck, to bet 20? No. Nah. I don't that. know. Yeah, that's tough. But look, I think this brings up the bigger point. Is Zion going to play the rest of the year? Coach K said that he will, but that brings up the question. That knee injury, do you risk it just so you can you know, get to the Elite Eight? I don't know. It's a you gotta little play. difficult. You got to play. Yeah, you got to play. We'll see. Right. Anyway, big, let's big move, time games. Moving on. Big here. time games this weekend starting or week starting on Tuesday night. Number one Duke at Virginia Tech. Can Buzz Williams and the Hokies pull off the upset here? No, Dukies all day. They're not going to lose another game the rest of the year. They're Even if Zion play. doesn't play. Even if Zion doesn't play. That, uh, that, that, come on, Virginia Tech. Justin Robinson. He's been a little injured. Been bit by the injury bug. I like Duke. Big Virginia time. Tech only beat Notre Dame by single digits the other day. Yeah, that Duke. was tight. Duke. All right, we'll move on to the Big East now. Number eleven at number seven. Excuse me, at number eleven Marquette at number seventeen Villanova. Villanova a little bit shaky this year. What do you think, Marquette? Get him for the second time this season. You know how much I love Marcus Howard. Oh my gosh. And he only scored fourteen points against Providence this weekend. And Marquette still won. Yeah. Marcus Howard has a bigger game. They beat Villanova. They're not that talented. Marquette, they're sneaky. They may be like a dark horse favorite Final Four. You never know. Never know. Next one, Big 12 basketball, number four, Kentucky, number five, Tennessee. Tight one. SEC, not Big 12. Good try, though. Oh, I no. Like, oh. Listen, listen. I like Tennessee, though. Oh. Admiral Schofield, Grant That's bad. Williams. Shout out Jonathan Hoppy with Grant Williams. Mm. Those big boys, they're a handful down low. I like Tennessee to pull that one out at home. That's big time. Last one here, Big 10, big boy country. Seven Michigan at 24 Maryland. What do you think? Mark Turgeon is going to be able to uh, pull off the upset? Well, two old school, grinded out type of coaches. John Beeline, Mark Turgeon. Michigan beat him the first time they do it again. Give me the Wolverines. Wolverines, you never know. All right, that's all the time we have here on No Pulp. We hope you enjoyed this web edition. For Corey Spector, I'm AJ Fabry. Everybody have a great week.